All right, you've been watching uh, uh, President Trump, uh, latest news conference before that, Governor Andy Bashir. Uh, the President Trump's news conference is continuing, by the, and you can see that uh, on Facebook if you'd like to continue watching that. We have a feed up on there, but we want to uh, use our uh, 20 minutes or so before the CBS Evening News to get you up to date on the latest news from uh, Eastern and Southern Kentucky. So let's go back to Governor Bashir's news conference. Actually, a bit of uh, good news from his news conference this afternoon. We'll get to that in a moment, but first we want to update you on the number of cases. 35 more cases announced by the governor today. That brings the total close to 200 in Kentucky, 198 COVID-19 cases in the Bluegrass State. Another man has died, the fifth uh, fatality. He is from Jefferson County and had underlying health issues like all the others. Now, let's switch to some good news. The governor expects to soon open the first drive-through COVID-19 testing location. And while unemployment benefits is now open to the self-employed, substitute teachers, and child care workers, among others. So more people uh, will be eligible for unemployment benefits. Speaking of unemployment, with so many losing their jobs, people are having a hard time filing for unemployment. We've heard your horror stories of busy signals, unreturned calls, and websites crashing. WYMT's Phil Pendleton took those questions to the Workforce Development Secretary, who is also Kentucky's Lieutenant Governor, Jacqueline Coleman. The only sound outside this Southern Kentucky barber shop is of the water dripping the cars going by. Like so many other places in Kentucky where people are not working. Yeah, which, you know, I understand all this is going on. Steve Henderson is among those making noises of another kind, frustration over wanting to file for unemployment. Honestly, it's all kind of up in the air when I'll go back to work but not being able to. You know, I tried that, it was a, a technical support number and was on and stayed on hold, let her let it just sit there for three hours. Nobody answered that. He was laid off from the city center in downtown Lexington. He and thousands of others are trying to either call or log on to file unemployment, but they say they can't connect. So you go through the voice prompts and you finally get to the point where you can talk to a person. Um, the one time that I made it that far, it told me that there was 101 people in, uh, in front of me and that I should try to call back later. Set up regional call centers. So it's not just one line that folks are calling anymore. There is a, a call center set up in every region of Kentucky. Coleman and says they are processing 30 times the normal amount of claims each day and assures people they're doing everything they can as fast as they can do it. They're not going to have the wait times that they normally have, but they can rest assured that we are going to take care of Kentuckians. It may take us a little longer than usual or that any of us would like, but we are doing everything we can to make sure that Kentuckians have what they need. She says they are pulling 145 to 200 additional state workers from other jobs to help man the phones for unemployment. In Frankfurt, Phil Pendleton, WYMT Mountain News. Coleman also says their servers, which have crashed from the load, are now running with seven times the additional capacity. For now, Goodwill stores will no longer accept drop-off donations at their Kentucky stores. This comes as stores are closed to customers and workers statewide. The tentative reopening date for all Goodwill stores in Kentucky is set for April 6th. Well, Hazard is home to a new little bookstore called the Red Spotted Newt. After February flooding closed the store for a few days, it was back up and running in no time. But now with the restrictions the governor is placing on businesses, the owner is having to change things up. WYMT's Will Puckett has more. After the February flood, owner Mandy Scheffel has the Red Spotted Newt back up and running. That happened quickly. The community rallied. I got a lot of support and, and love during that time, and I felt like business went on as usual. After weathering that storm, Scheffel had no idea March would bring a cloud possibly worse than the month before. It's a hard decision for me to even be here today. I don't know um, what the right decision is. You know, I don't know. I want to do what's best for the community and keep everybody safe and healthy and also my family. So Sheffel comes in two times a week, Wednesdays and Saturdays. She fills orders and for some waits to hand them their books by the curb. 
Money's still coming in. It's definitely not what it was, but you know, there, there is some money coming in enough to cover overhead. As she moves to focusing her sales online, she sees this is something she had been planning to do for a while, but has never had time. And I had kind of been putting that on the back burner. I didn't really have a website going. I wasn't doing any kind of online sales. And this has forced me to, to really look at that. Now she hopes there's just a month where her store is completely open and booming. Will joins us now live from his house. And Will, how long does Mandy plan to be able to do this? Steve, obviously this is a short term fix, but her online sales are doing very well right now. She says if this lasts a couple of weeks, it will be able to make do. But if it lasts for more than a few months, it might start to get a little tight. And has she been talking with any other stores? Yeah, Steve, a lot of the storms around the Hazard Perry County area, the small businesses specifically have been talking. Mandy said that they're all really just picking each other up right now. They said that they have heard some rumblings of some help for those small businesses, and they hope that comes in sooner rather than later. Steve. All right, Will, thank you. Summit Community Church in Perry County is looking for help to create care packages for some of the most vulnerable during this time. Just a few of the items needed include oatmeal, peanut butter, canned food, bottled water and soap. Pastor Mark Combs says these items can be dropped off at the church. Well, I think it removes from them the worry of, I need this, I can't go out. Does anybody even know that I have this need? Uh, so just, the, just to help them with somebody is thinking about you, even if you don't realize that we are. Combs also says they need to need people to deliver these packages to see a full list of items they're asking for you. Uh, you can visit our website at WIMT.com. As COVID-19 spreads, overcrowded jails remain a concern. Many states started releasing nonviolent offenders, 60 and older, nearing the end of their sentences. Now, Governor Bashir has said in his news conferences that the state was looking into options like that. WIMT's Emily Bennett spoke to the Leslie County Jailer, Danny Clark, about his take on this. Emily? Yes, yeah, Steve, I did talk to Danny Clark, who said that overcrowding was a problem a couple months ago, but with more jails opening in the region, it's not as big of a problem now. But with the COVID-19 outbreak, the Department of Corrections is looking into options to decrease the number of people in the jails. Now, Clark says the Department of Corrections is starting to go through files to see what inmates they could release. Right now, they are looking at people who are older than 60 with nonviolent crimes at the end of their sentences. The Department of Corrections is already putting strict regulations on the jails to keep them on lockdown so inmates do not have any exposure. Jails aren't allowed to transfer any inmates until the outbreak is over. I, I do think it's a good idea because they didn't want us taking them to the hospital and all this and that and I, I would just rather let my nonviolent over 60 out. Now, Clark did say he has a handful of inmates released as the counties are starting to go over who meets that um, that and that criteria. So we'll see what happens in the future. In Hazard, Emily Bennett, WYMT Mountain News. All right, Emily, thank you. The Laurel County Health Department spent their day looking for anyone the positive COVID-19 patient announced on Tuesday could have come into contact with. During the last several weeks, the health department had been preparing to see cases and began talking with other health systems to determine what their roles and responsibilities were. Once they received the confirmed case on Tuesday, the staff began tra tracking down anyone that could have come into contact with that patient. We're doing a lot of um, contact investigation, contact tracing, um, calling those folks who had been exposed to the person um, that was diagnosed with the COVID-19. And we'll, that's called case monitoring, and we will do that throughout um, the COVID-19 period. If anyone starts having symptoms of COVID-19, the health department says to call your primary doctor first. If needed, they will send you for further evaluation and testing. One church in Lawrence County is working to help keep the local economy going, and while doing that, they're helping feed those who are still working in essential businesses. WIMT's Connor James met up with some of those with the church as food was delivered today. 
Well, the concept is actually kind of simple that the church is adopting. What they do is they order food to go from a local restaurant and take that to one of the essential businesses that's open, for example, a dialysis center or a hospital. This all was thought up by people at a local Louisa church called The Table. The church has stopped having in-person service and moved it all virtually, but they are still out in the community helping those in need. Multiple local restaurants have benefited by this. Today, they took food from a local Mexican restaurant and took it to a dialysis center. It's something staff say makes them feel blessed, and they hope this kindness is contagious campaign grows. I think it was actually Summer, um, our pastor's wife, who mentioned let's just help not only our local businesses, but give to those who are working double time, working really hard um, during all of this. Now, some of the money does come from the table itself, but a lot of it was actually given by an anonymous donor. They say they don't really even know if it's a member of the church or not, but nonetheless, it's keeping this project going. I'm in Louisa, Connor James, WYMT Mountain News. Those in the church encourage people in other communities to start Kindness is Contagious campaigns of their own. Sky Alert Weather.